Hi, my name is Scott Biggerstaff. I'm an orthopedic surgeon with Ortho Carolina. My practice is located in Winston-Salem. I have a particular interest in minimally invasive surgery. However, I do specialize in all areas of, of foot and ankle surgery from arthritis to athletic injuries to heel pain from probably five years old all the way up to patients in their 90s. Ankle sprains are probably one of the most common injuries that we see in our office as orthopedists. You can see on this model right here that there are two main sets of ligaments that get injured when you have an ankle sprain. One that's called your calcaneofibular ligament, and then you also have your anterior talofibular ligament that's right here. With an ankle sprain, when you hear about a tear, they kind of just stretch out like this. Once the ligaments are stretched out, it's very easy for the bones to go out of alignment. If it happens chronically, that actually can lead to arthritis. One of the most common things that I see every day is heel pain. There's many causes of heel pain. Uh, probably the three most common, one would be stress fractures. The second would be Achilles tendonitis. And then the third thing would be plantar fasciitis. Stress fractures in general are treated with immobilization. A lot of times we'll put people in walking boots, modify their activities and they get better. The second thing is Achilles tendonitis. So the tendonitis would be an inflammation of the Achilles. You just get this really painful swollen area. This ligament right here is called your plantar fascia. And where most people get the pain is right here where it attaches to the bone. And what causes the pain is that people get micro tears in this area and that's actually what causes the pain. As you can see right here, we have an example of a patient with a bunion. And what happens with a bunion is you get these metatarsal bones that deviate apart. The big toe kind of goes towards the outside of the foot and that's what creates the deformity here. This area right here where the bunion's located, the patient gets pain, irritation, swelling, redness from where it presses on their shoes. In the last several years, there's been a shift in foot and ankle surgery from doing things with a big open incision to doing it minimally invasively. I've got a couple of cadaver specimens here. I'm just making an incision that shows the approximate size of a, a traditional bunion surgery. And as you can see here, depending on the severity of the bunion, I mean, you can have an incision that may be one and a half, two inches long. Currently, with the minimally invasive surgery, and I have a second specimen here, I make a, a small incision that is you know, not even a, a centimeter long. That's actually where I use these specialized instruments to help you know, correct the bunion. And then after that, I fix the bunion with, in general, three screws. And to place those screws, I have two additional little small incisions here, and then I have the final incision for the, the third screw that would be up in this area. As you can see, there's a significant difference between these two specimens in the size of the incision. I'm constantly looking ways to improve the patient experience. Traditional bunion surgery, I always felt like it was a long recovery and was difficult for the patient. However, when I started doing the minimally invasive bunion surgeries, I was blown away as to the patient experience. They had less pain, I had them walking sooner, and I was able to get them in regular shoes sooner than I would have been doing it the more traditional way. Many of my patients have come back to me and said that they wish they had done it sooner because it was a better experience than what they had heard from family members and friends who had had bunions fixed previously. Another common area that interests me and also that we see a lot of injuries and chronic conditions to are the Achilles tendon. This is the Achilles tendon right here. It's actually the tendon that attaches your calf to your heel bone. One of the other common injuries that we get are Achilles tendon ruptures. The physical exam test that we use to diagnose the Achilles tendon rupture is called a Thompson's test. And basically what I do is I squeeze the calf and that puts pressure on the Achilles tendon. You can actually see the foot kind of pushing down. As you can see here, I just made an incision and what I'm doing is to show you what the Achilles tendon looks like 
when the patient has a negative Thompson's test or when the Achilles tendon is intact. And you can see here when I squeeze the leg, um, you can see the, the tendon moving here and then uh, thereby moving the heel and the rest of the foot. People will say, you know, how do I know when I've had an Achilles tendon rupture? What are my symptoms? They'll feel a loud pop. Um, and a lot of pain in the back of their ankle. And frequently what I hear is that the patients will turn around and look to see who kicked them in the back of their leg. Now that we've got the Achilles tendon exposed, I'm actually gonna surgically create an Achilles tendon rupture and then we can show you what a positive Thompson's test looks like. And you can see when I squeeze the calf now um, that you know there's very little uh, movement or flexion down. This would be a good example of an open Achilles tendon repair. We do a similar thing when I do it minimally invasively, but you end up putting stitches kind of in the upper end and lower end and then tying them together. Well, I've now reconnected the ends, and so when I squeeze the calf, the foot will uh, plantar flex or, or push down like it did earlier. The recovery can take six to nine months. Typically, I keep them non-weight bearing or keep them not walking on that particular foot for about four to six weeks. Once we allow the Achilles tendon ruptures, to start walking after their surgery. We begin physical therapy. Sometimes they'll stay in physical therapy for several months. I always stress to them afterwards to continue with the therapy uh, until they feel like they're back to normal. And sometimes that can take nine to 12 months. Thanks for watching our demonstration. If you experience any foot and ankle problems or injuries, we would be happy to see you at any of our Ortho Carolina locations. Please feel free to visit us online to schedule an appointment.